priorities. Are there things in your life that are trying to battle and build for the one biggest thing that God has given you as a currency while you're here on earth time? Today we're going to walk through the process of finding out what the priority of our king is. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today to The Colony. This is a show that I have made up that is strictly dedicated to helping you to understand how to rule and reign while you're here on earth. In accordance to the book of Genesis chapter 1, 26. I want to thank all of you for tuning in today. Um, it is important that we understand that life is full of things that compete to take our most precious human possession, which is our time. And there's a man by the name of Maslow who created a hierarchy of what he has uh, done a science on to show nine things that our human body or that humans in a whole try to make a priority. And I'm going to read those things for you. According to his uh, science, his hypothesis reads this, that water is the number one priority of man. Food, clothes, housing, protection, then shortly thereafter is security, preservation, self-actualization, knowing who you are and what you're here for, and then last is significance, that you matter and that you make a difference. These are things that bring men satisfaction and make us feel accomplished. But the question that I pose to you today is, are these priorities in line with what our king's priorities are? Does he want us to focus on water? Does he want us to bring all of our attention on our clothes and what we're going to wear? Ladies, does he want you to focus on the makeup that you're going to put on to match what you have on? Or does he want you to be more focused with something else? And that's what we're going to dive into today. Let's start by going into Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. And it reads as follows. I'm going to read it out of the uh, what I like to call the Constitution, which is from the kingdom of heaven. And we're going to read and see what the word of God says. Now, what I love about the Bible that I'm reading, which is called the NLT, it has red text. And what the red text tells us is attention. Jesus is speaking. Our king is telling us what the rules, laws and regulations and the statutes are from the kingdom of heaven. Now, remember, this is a colony. The planet that we live on is a colony of the kingdom of heaven. So we want things to happen on earth earth as they're happening in heaven let's see what our king tells us in verse 25 he says this this is why i tell you not to worry about everyday life whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing it's very interesting that it's no it should be it should come to no surprise to us that the things that we are pri making a priority in our life are contrary to what the king wants us to make priority. What are you saying, Pastor Glenn? That it's okay to have nice things. I'm not disputing that. I'm not telling you don't ever buy another nice thing in your life. No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is there is something that our king wants us to make top priority. That nothing should come before this. Not water, not food, not clothing, not significance, not anything else should be more important than this one thing that the king wants us to do. Now, what is this one thing that you're saying, Pastor Glenn? Jesus is saying to us that awareness of our worth is more important than anything. I'm going to sit right there for a minute. Self-work. Now, I'm not talking about being conceited. That's not where I'm going with this. But what I'm talking about is awareness. The reason why we don't have a lot of things that we are supposed to have in our life is because we have keys, but we don't know which keys we, to use on the certain doors that we're trying to unlock in our life. If you're suffering from depression, there is a key in heaven to unlock, to unleash, what you, uh, to help you to understand who you are to God and what your purpose is here on earth. If you suffer from poverty, there is a key that God has given us that unlocks the kingly warehouse so that you can have everything, access to everything that you have. Isn't it a shame to have keys and not know how to unlock the doors or what those keys are for? It's a lonely and desolate place to be in. But today, we're going to teach you, using the Word of God, the Constitution from heaven, on how to unlock certain doors. There are nine different keys that we're going to go through in this next series I'm going to go through with you. And today, we're going to cover the first one. So I hope that you're ready. I hope that you have your pens and pads out because we're going to talk seriously about what God considers the priority, which is your self-worth. Amen? Amen? So, self-worth is knowing how important you are to the King. 
It's not about how good you are. It's not about all of your accomplishments. You may have made millions. You may have been a celebrity. And you remember back in the day when you played football and you had all the scholarships and all that stuff. We're not talking about those things. Those are things that you did within your own ability. What I want you to understand is that in this colony called Earth, God is not concerned with your abilities because he gave them to you in the first place. What he's more concerned with is you being aware of who you are in his kingdom and to him. As I explained to you last week, you know, God is so concerned about you. and He loves you so much that he has a record account of every single hair on your head. Yeah. Every time one of your hairs fall out, he taps and says, hey, 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 write that down. Another hair just fell out. Right. And when another hair grows in, he says, oh, write okay. that down. Another hair grows in. Now, like I said before, I love my kids and I love my family, but I don't care how many hairs are falling <laughs> in and out of their head. It's not important to me, right? But to your heavenly father, your king, right. who's concerned about you, right. it is. Yeah. To where he has a book record of every single one of your hairs. Hallelujah. So what I'm trying to get you to understand is that you have to understand how important and how valuable you are. The yeah. scriptures tells us this, that he gave, God gave his only begotten son. The only son that he ever had, he gave him for you. That he, I, I, I love you and I love you with, the, with the God's love. But I just don't know if I'm willing to give my own child, yeah. my firstborn, for you. Yeah. But it's not about my love for you. It's about the king's love for you. Yeah. So we have to understand that you have to become aware of your own self-worth. Let's go to the book of Matthew back um, in chapter 6. I'm going to read verse 26. And I'm going to read these verses for you. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in the barns. For your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? The answer to that is no. Verse 28. And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work to make their clothing. Yet Solomon, in all of his glory, was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers and that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? And then Jesus says these words, verse 31. Pay close attention to this. This is going to be a paradigm shift for some of you. So don't worry. I'm sorry. Yeah. So don't worry about these things. Saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of the unbeliever. What is Jesus saying? Is that if you are worried about what you're going to eat, if you're worried about the clothes you're going to wear, if you're worried about the cares of this world, then we have to come into question about if you are a believer or an unbeliever. If you are worried about things that God is saying he's going to take care of, then you have to really question yourself and ask yourself do i really have faith this is what we have to understand in kingdoms kings are governed about by their success and their success is based on two things their domain which is the land that they own and the second thing is the welfare of their citizens mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen i'm here today to tell you this you are a citizen of the from the kingdom of heaven and God is not successful if you are not successful. Why? Because his success is governed off of your success. God wants you to be provided for. He wants to feed you. He wants to clothe you. He wants you to be in good health. And he wants you to experience that. Watch this. He don't want you to wait till you get to heaven to experience that. He wants you to experience it right now. You don't have to wait. The Bible says these words in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 10. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. On earth, which is the planet you and I live on, as it is in heaven. What am I saying to you? That you don't have to wait till 2019 to receive your blessing. I don't want to, I, I, I'm surprised I even have to remind you that the year is not over yet. If God promised you something, the year is not over yet. It can still make manifest in your life within the next minute, within the next five minutes, or by the, the 12th hour of December 31st of 2018. The year is not over yet. So don't give up on this year. Don't already start focusing on 2019 when God is not through with 2018. Some of us that are watching this show right now you may not even make it to january 1st of 2019 so don't worry about yeah, tomorrow that's good don't worry about yeah, it that's good. 
Tomorrow is going to do what tomorrow is going to do. God wants you to focus on your self-worth today. Don't try and come up with a, um, a New Year's resolution for 2019 when you don't even have a resolution for today. Make sure you understand who you are so you can unlock the kingdom's authority in your life today. If you don't want to be sick no more, you can claim that today in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you don't want to be in poverty no more, you can claim that today in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you want to live a life of prosperity where you wake up with a smile on your face, where depression no longer has a hold on you, you can do that today in the name of Jesus. Amen. You must become aware of who you are so you can become aware of what you're supposed to be doing while you're here. You you are a dominion carrier. Come you on. give birth to life. When you yeah. walk into a room, the anointing yeah. follows you. Yeah. You can command angels to go into a room before you, yeah. and they must yield to your word. The word of God says in Isaiah 55, 11, so shall my word go forth, and it shall not return unto me void. You are a child of the king. God said, let us make man in our own image. Come so on. if his word can make manifest, baby, so can your word as well. Yeah. Stop speaking the word of the enemy. That's Stop right. speaking the word of death. Stop speaking the diagnosis over your life. Start Amen. speaking life. Start Amen. saying things like, I am rich. I yes. am strong. I am By his healed. stripes, I am healed. Yes. Start declaring in your life that it is not about where I've come from or it's not about where I'm at. It's about where I'm going. Amen. Because I need you to understand this. In this colony, God does not see you where you're at. He sees you where you are going. He sees his son's blood all covered over you. So that's why you can speak a word and say Jesus name and you will begin to unlock things on this planet that you never thought you could unlock. Oh God, help me. I want you to understand that you are a priority to God. Your self-worth. Once you this is why the enemy wants you to be so depressed. The other day I went to the store and I was standing in line and I saw this. This is so crazy. There was a, a something called NyQuil, which was an aid to help you to go to sleep. There was something also called Dayquil, which is something to help you to stay awoke. There was also something, uh, it was another medication, I can't remember what it was, um, um, awake. So you have NyQuil to help you to go to sleep. You got awake to keep you up during the day. Then you got DayQuil so that you don't fall asleep for taking medication. Hello. Now the enemy put these things in place because what you're using is a medication when God wants you to use his word. If you use his word, his word will keep you awoke. If you use his word, you don't need NyQuil, you don't need medication. This is why medication has become so popular all across the world. Because we're replacing the word of God with a, a, a medication to try to soothe something that God is saying, I want to give you a supernatural healing. We become dependent on medication. I'm going to share with you a true fact. Opioids have become an epidemic Come all on. across the world. But I want to share something more interesting than that. Here in America, 98% of all opioids consumed are consumed right here on this soil. So that means all across the world, they only account for 2% of 100% of the medication. What are you saying, Pastor Glenn? That we've allowed the enemy to encompass our minds. And help us to believe that a little pill has a solution to our life. Mm. When God sent his word to encompass us, to consume us, and so that we can be healed. The Bible says that by his stripes we are healed. Not by oxycodone we are healed. It's not by opioids that we're healed. It's by his stripes. But we have to become aware of what that means to us. And what does that mean to you? It means you no longer have to be bound to the things of this world. You are a king's child. You walk in royalty. You have authority. You can speak to a thing and it shall do what you say it shall do. Amen. Amen. What are you saying? Your confidence should be in the obligation and commitment that our king has for the welfare of his citizens. Yes. I'm going to say that again. Your confidence should not be in you. It should be in the obligation and the commitment that our king has for you. He's committed to making you prosperous. He's committed to making you prosper in everything that you do. But we have to become aware of what that is. Now, you might be saying, Pastor Glenn, you don't know my situation. You don't know that my rent is due in two days. And if I don't come up with the money, my family's going to get kicked out. Pastor Glenn, you don't understand that our refrigerator is a cooler. And if I can't keep enough money in this house to get ice, our food will perish. I understand the difficulties. But God is wanting you to understand. If you need things.
things. There is a, per a process to having things. Yeah. And I'm going to share that process with you. That process is Matthew 6, 33. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a process. And then God wants you to understand there is a priority. Say this word with me. Priority. priority. You have to do things in order. In order to receive things from the king, there is an order to it. You yeah. can't just kick in the door at the king's lair and say, king, I need to have a word with you. It doesn't work like that. You might get your head cut off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? There is an order in the way you should do things. When I'm talking to my boss, I call him and I ask for his time. That's the order or the chain of command. And God wants you to understand that there is an order and a process to getting things. Good and he says that in the book of Matthew chapter 6, 33. He says these words. Seek the kingdom of God yes. above all else and live righteously. Mm -hmm. And he, watch me, he will give you everything you need. In other translations, it says this. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God mm -hmm. and all of his righteousness yeah. and all these things yes, shall be added shall unto be added. you. Yeah. What are we saying, Pastor yeah. Glenn? You have been focused on chasing things. Yeah. When God says, if you chase my kingdom, things will begin to chase you. Yeah. Oh, I'm speaking yeah. to somebody with that today. Yeah. Stop chasing food and start chasing kingdom. When you wake up in the morning, make that the first thing that you do every single day. Is reach out to God and say, God, I recognize you are the king of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the alpha. You are the omega. You were there in the beginning and you will be there in the end. There is nothing too hard for you. Yeah. I have concerns. But Father, I'm not going to bring them before you because watch this. I already know that you're committed to making sure I have food on my table. You're committed to making sure that I have clothes on my back. You're committed to making sure that all of my needs are taken care of. So what does God want us to focus on? Wisdom. Yes. Oh. Yes. Come on. That's good. Seek the kingdom first and everything shall be added unto you. Mm. Stop chasing money. Put yourself in a position where money is chasing you. Yeah. And how do you do that? Seek the kingdom first. Uh -huh. Stop looking for all these different remedies and teas and all this stuff to make your body work and function the way that God wanted it to function. What do you need to do? <laughs> Seek ye first the kingdom, and all of those things will be added unto you. They'll come to you, but you got to get the priority in order. And the last thing I want to say before we close is this, is that the key to own unlocking the warehouse of the king's kingdom, of all of his riches, of everything that he owns. The key to get access to a room that has everything that you've been looking for. Yeah. The, key, the, the key to get access to everything that you're hoping for. Yeah. The key to get access to everything that your heart's been desiring. Mm -hmm. The things you've been longing for. Yeah. Is it a new car? Is it a house? Is it a new business? The key to get those things and yeah. to unlock this is the first key that God wants us to understand. you got to have this key in order to unlock this warehouse. And it's this. Yes. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every time you pray, make sure that you say these words. In the name of Jesus. Whenever there is something trying to come against you, you say these words. In the name of Jesus. If there is a disease or a sickness that is trying to infiltrate your body, you tell that sickness in the name of Jesus. If your business is not prospering, you don't have to ask for riches. And I'm going to stop right there and make sure you understand that. Stop asking for money. Good work. Everything that you need is already around you. Yeah. You just need wow. to become aware of where it's at yeah. and go after it. And when the Holy Spirit reveals to you, this is where faith has to kick in. When the Holy Spirit reveals to you where it's at, you have to forsake everything else and go right after oh, that boy. thing. The yeah. way and the process that the Holy Spirit told you to do it. Mm. You got to do it this way. Amen. Ask not for more riches. But more wisdom wow. with right. which to unlock the things that God has already placed inside of you to make you prosperous. Yeah. And how do you do that? 
seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Once you get a revelation of this in your life, once you start understanding that the key to getting what I need from him is to acknowledge him in all of my ways, the key to get what I need from him is to make sure that I'm following and living a righteous life, the key to get what I need from him is to make sure that I'm not doing it for self gain, but I'm also doing it to make sure that other people prosper, the key to getting everything that you need from God, in fact, of your healing, in fact, of your prosperity, in fact, of your children that just aren't acting right, in fact of your husband that might be a knucklehead out there in the streets right now, in fact of your wife that may have walked out on you three or four times, you gotta start looking for the kingdom. The problem with most of our marriages in Christian society is that we're focusing on one another and we have to stop doing that. We gotta focus on kingdom. Let God be God and you do what you're supposed to do. I can't worry about if my wife is gonna follow God. I can't worry about if my wife is gonna do what God is telling her to do. I have to make sure that I'm in line with the word of God which gives her something to focus on so that she can come into alignment with the word of God as well. Men, it's time for us to be men and stand up and take the authority in our homes that God has given us. You are called for a purpose in a time such as this. The hour has cometh and now is where those that worship him must worship him in spirit and not just in spirit but also in truth. The truth of the matter is that we have to make sure that we have ourselves in alignment. Wives don't follow craziness. They can't follow it. They have to follow order. Hallelujah. You receive instruction from God, and whether your wife or your husband wants to follow that or not, that's not your problem. You focus on the priority, and the priority will always be the kingdom of heaven. And once you make that your priority, everything else will begin to chase you. Imagine yourself running. Right now, you might be running and chasing money and chasing all kind of stuff, but imagine you turning around and facing God and start chasing the kingdom, and all that stuff that you were chasing will now begin to chase you. Checks will begin to come in the mail. Healing will begin to come. Doctors will begin to say things to you like, I don't know what happened, but we're going to run the test again because it looks like you've been healed from that. You can smile on your face and say, you don't have to run another test. I already know that I received my healing because I am a king, a child of a king here on earth, and I have dominion. Amen. As we're closing, I want to leave you with these words. Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you. You are so valuable. Yes. And I believe that it hurts God's heart every time he hears you say an ill word about you. Come on. Whoa. For your homework assignment, what I want you to do is this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Is I want you to go into your bathroom or some quiet place, and I want you to look into the mirror, and I want you to say these words. I love you. Come on. For some of you, that might be the hardest thing you've done all year long because you, you've condemned yourself. You've made a lot of mistakes. Who hasn't? Stand in line. I made one today. <laughs> but the point that I'm trying to make here is that you have to become aware of who you are. Yes. Stop yes. allowing the enemy to control your thoughts in your mind. This is why you have to read the Constitution from the Kingdom of Heaven. Because there are reports. And one of these reports, you're going to have to choose to believe. Yes. You're either going to believe the report of the enemy and continue to live the way that you're living. Or are you going to rise up and say, I'm going to believe the reports of the Lord? Yes. And how do you know what the report is if you're not reading the Constitution? Yes. You have to become aware of who you are. And it don't just come by speaking in tongues and just open your eyes and it just lines. No, that's not how this works. You have to start reading the word. Yes. You have to know what the Constitution and what the will and the law of the law of the land is. Right. You have dominance. Yes. Take it. And for those of us in this, uh, watching this, anywhere across the world, in order to unlock these keys, you have to be made into the royal family. Amen. As the scripture says, engrafted. Amen. Because right now, you've been living in sin. You've been disconnected Come on. from the king. Come on. And in order to get back connected, the Bible tells us this, that you have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You got to believe it in your heart mm -hmm. that Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead. And confess it with your mouth. And then the word of God says this. You shall be saved. Yeah. What does that mean? 
Once you become saved, you become a king's kid. And once you become a king's kid, thank you, Lord. This, I love this part right here. You get access to everything in the royal palace. It now becomes yours. Why? Because you are a child of the king. And whatever the king has access to, baby, understand this, you have access to it too. So we're going to speak this word right now. If you're in the room or if you're watching on television, I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. I promise God that I would never end one of these segments without actually doing a call to an uh, altar call. Yes. Say these words with me. Jesus, Jesus. I, believe. I believe. Please forgive me Please for my wrong thinking, for my wrong thoughts about me. I now understand that I have worth, that you value me, that you gave your life, Jesus, just so that I can live. God, change my heart. Change my mind. Change my life. I love you. And from this day forward, I choose to follow you. Use me, Lord. Wash away all of my sins. I seal this prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. For those of you who just gave your life to Christ, I want to thank you so much. The angels are in heaven rejoicing, yeah. and we are excited for you and what God is getting ready to do. Listen to me. Within the next seven days, God is going to begin to reveal itself and make manifest the truth of what you just did. What you just allow God to do is, uh, the Bible tells us that Jesus is a gentleman. He stands at the door and he knocks. That's good. You just open the door yeah. and watch him come in there and kick all that evil stuff out of there and get your house clean. He wants you to be prosperous. And uh, again, thank you so much for watching and tuning in today. I want to remind you that don't go away because Pastor April is getting ready to yes. give you a word of revelation on how you can not just get this, but how to hold on to it and kick anything out that doesn't belong there. Again, my name is Pastor Glenn, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to The Colony. Amen. Amen.